One of the things that this crisis has taught us, sir, is that we are dangerously over-dependent on a global supply chain for our medicines, like penicillin, our medical supplies, like masks, and our medical equipment, like ventilators. We have, right now, as we speak, over 50 countries have already imposed some forms of export restrictions in their country against the rest of the world. And what, we've, what we're learning from that is that no matter how many treaties you have, no matter how many alliances, no matter how many phone calls, uh, when push comes to shove, you run the risk as a nation of not having what you need. And if there's any vindication of the president's buy American, secure borders, and a strong manufacturing base, philosophy, strategy, and belief, it is this crisis because it underscores everything that we see there. Navarro's right. He's been right. He was Mocked, he was ridiculed by a lot of people, very fancy economists who think that they're so much smarter than him, just as Trump was ridiculed for recognizing the threat that China poses. Many people who think of themselves as experts, who think that what they bring to the table is uh, a breadth of knowledge and judgment on these issues, the, the particularly sophisticated and complex international trade and policy issues, uh, they have been made to look like complete fools. I mean, sure, it's great if you're somebody who has been uh, offshoring and if you're a company that's been offshoring to China so that you are making a whole lot more money for yourself. And yes, people have pointed out that, you know, maybe being able to buy a hundred fifty dollar flat screen TV at Walmart, a Walmart because it's made in China isn't worth the price we are paying right now in national preparedness for what's going on. Yeah, you, you don't say. Now we all understand. Think about what is running short right now. Necessary medical equipment, protective gear, ventilators, antibiotics. A huge percentage of critical and staple. I mean, the antibiotics you need for a whole lot of things made in China. No one thought this was a problem who is involved in international trade policy in all these D.C. think tanks and everything else. Our media institutions no one thought this was a problem until now. The lack of foresight with all of this has been stunning. And it's more than just lack of foresight. There are people who all along have refused, have refused to make what are the decisions that are the best interests of America and the American people because there's a, there's a lot of money sloshing around from, let's just call it what it is, the globalists. That's the truth. There are a lot of people who are benefiting from the offshoring and from the outsourcing of all this, all these different jobs and, and manufacturing and all the things that have been going on. And, and not only that, I mean, I remember I took a, a class in, I think it was, it was a required, usually I got to pick my classes, but it was a required freshman class. It was called something like Bridge to the 21st Century. And it was like if, if a Tom Friedman editorial was made into a freshman seminar that you had to take, that's what this was. It was all just, we are all one people and we are all one trade union and we are all just holding hands and going to get better as a world and i don't mean america i mean the world all the countries of the world you know it was a big kumbaya moment right we're all supposed to just think that everything's great and fine and and you know no borders one world government this was a really this has been a fashionable ideology in the academy and in the media in, in elite circles you know the davos set for a long time of course if you're super wealthy and you think that you can uh, you think you can immunize yourself, in a sense, from these the ill effects of this, which they do when it comes to illegal immigration, for example. Illegal immigration benefits the wealthy almost exclusively. They don't care. And whether you raise the tax rate, you know, what, what it does to local public schools and English as a second language and all these different challenges. I mean, if you're a member of the Soros family or you're, you know, you're uh, Bloomberg or you're you know, na name a billionaire, none of that stuff matters to you. In fact, you might want to have really cheap labor at your businesses, really cheap labor doing household chores for you, whatever it may be. So they weren't paying the consequences of it. And and it's it's unsurprising in a sense that here we are now. And as many are pointing out, and I, I saw uh, Ann Coulter editorial on this, and there have been there have been a lot of people that are saying this. This is a uh, this is a pang for globalism moment right now. 
Hey, Team Buck, thank you so much for watching the first on YouTube. If you like this video, please click that little thumbs up button so then it will log as liked. And also, if you want to see more great content from the first, please click subscribe.